Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Uh, back at the start of the season, you you look at this game and think, wow, you could really be playing for something potentially against the Buccaneers, Monday night football, the week before your bye, and hey, you know, I mean, mathematically, sure. Eh, other than that, maybe not so much. I, I do want to start with the injury report from today, and there's plenty of, of DNPs on there, but there's a couple of limited practices as well that are interesting. Let's start with Marshawn Lattimore. Lattimore, of course, was able to practice a little bit last week, limited again this week. But my question really is, given the opponent and a certain wide receiver on the other sideline, was there really is there yeah. any is there any way Marshawn Lattimore's not playing in this game on Sun, on Monday night? No, I mean he, he had an incredibly serious injury, a lacerated kidney, uh, um, not to be made light of. But of course, we've been making comments like you know he would have had it removed to get yes. off the table and play against Mike Evans there. So, uh, that I would be stunned if we do not see Marshawn Lattimore back to this. So, in all seriousness with it, what would his role look like coming off of that injury and only being able to practice limited? You know he's going to want to play every snap, but is there type some type of a pitch count there for Marshawn? Yeah, it's so, it's so unpredictable. Like, Mark Ingram had one of the most predictable injuries ever when he had a brain MCL. That is always three to four weeks, the guy comes back, good as new, no surgery. Uh, but this one is really hard to predict. I don't know how long, you know, I I really, we haven't been able to talk to him. I don't know, you know, how limited he was. I don't know if he was able to stay in shape. I don't know what kind of workouts he was able to do. I don't know if he was, you know, confined to, <laughs> uh, like, limited to no activity for several weeks. So I don't know how much rust that he's going to have to shake off. But obviously it's a good sign that this is his second week of practice. So he's had a little time to build back up. Uh, and obviously, they took a lot of time with that with that injury. So hopefully, we'll see him a as close to 100. percent But but without question, we would also have to expect a little rust. Pete Warner is the other one that really caught the eye, uh, being listed yeah. as limited with the with the uh, the ankle injury that has kept him out the last uh, few weeks. Uh, it, I mean, I know it's just Thursday, and they got a long way to go. But this should be a good sign that he returns this week. Yes. Well, I don't know about that. Okay. I, I think he might be more on the. I mean, it, of course it's possible, but he might be more on the, he just got back this week, and this is like what we saw with Lattimore last week. Um, um, because it was a pretty significant surgery that he had. Uh, but of course it's possible that he plays, but but I'm more optimistic that Lattimore will play than Warner will play because he's a week ahead. So with the game kind of as a whole, you know, it's it's interesting. Obviously, offensively, last week was a nightmare. It was the first time they've been shut out in 20 years. I mean, that's that's a, a new low kind of for this offense yeah, this season. of course. Um, but when I look back to week two, when they played the Buccaneers, uh, the offense wasn't moving then either. So how do they establish a better rhythm now? And look, you have Andy Dalton in there instead of Jameis Winston like you did in week two. How did they establish a better rhythm against this Tampa Bay defense? And they had a really hobbled Jameis Winston in that yeah. game too. So, so that wasn't even a fair look at, at Jameis, especially after he suffered the foot injury in the third quarter um, and, and really struggled in the fourth quarter. They, they played such a patient game plan against Tampa Bay in that game, and it's one that we've seen from this team a lot over the last couple of years. When Sean Payton was coach and certainly with Dennis Allen as coach, where they're willing to play that, you know, just stay on the scorecard and and try to try to go to a judge's decision at the end of the fight. Um, I think that thing was was it still three to three through three quarters. It was, uh, and I don't think they'd be afraid to do that again. Um, and I think that was their plan against San Francisco. And if they didn't, if they weren't the team that lost the turnover battle two nothing and got stopped at the five yard line twice, they were trying to win that game thirteen to ten or sixteen to thirteen or whatever it took. And, and I would not be surprised to to be see that be the approach again against Tampa Bay. They want to rely on their mostly healthy offensive line. They want to rely on their healthy running backs. They don't want their quarterbacks and their aerial assault to have to win the game for them. But that works when you can run the ball, and it works when you can win the turnover battle. And those are two things that we haven't seen consistently enough from the Saints. I think the the best thing is Tampa Bay is beat up too. They've got a lot of key players that are going to miss this game with injuries. 
Um, so their defense isn't quite as dominant as what we've been used to seeing in recent years. Uh, they're not running away with the division. They have a losing record too. Um, so they're not an unbeatable team. And, and we know that the Saints know the formula for beating this team. Easier said than done, of course. Uh, but but they know how to do it because they've done it a lot recently. So, um, you know, uh, they could still make things interesting. They could give us something to think about during the bye week if they can, if they can find that magic they usually reserve for Tampa Bay. So... I- I was going to ask you about that because absolutely. I mean, everybody knows that, right? Tom Brady just finally scored the first regular season win since he's been in Tampa in week two over the Saints defense. But that Saints defense we saw that week has been much different than ones we've seen in previous weeks. I guess we won't really know until they take the field Monday night. But do you think the Saints defense as it is right now at this point in the season still holds that formula to give make Tom Brady's life miserable? Well, the formula is only half the battle. So you also have to have the the personnel. And I think yeah. um, all the changes they made in the secondary, you know, I think that was where most of their mastery came from was having the matchups all across the board in the secondary. CJ Gardner Johnson against Chris Godwin, what Marshawn Lattimore has been able to do against Mike Evans, um, you know, and, and then obviously they don't have Marcus Williams or Malcolm Jenkins anymore either. But the good thing is they have a fighting chance this week because their secondary is about as healthy as it's been since week two. Um, and, and look, I think the Saints would have won that game if Marshawn Lattimore hadn't been ejected. Yeah. Right after Matt Marshawn Lattimore got ejected, they, they started picking on the guy who replaced him. And we've seen teams pick on the replacement members of the secondary all season long. So when healthy, uh, this secondary is probably good enough to go back to that formula that we've seen work at least they have a chance mike triplett of new orleans.football joining us in his normal thursday spot he's on twitter at mike triplett mike one thing i i want to ask you too is so you kind of mentioned it in a previous answer about turnovers and uh penalties yeah i mean it's just and you haven't consistently seen them win those battles is there potentially maybe a a lack of a, a lack of buy-in in the locker room right now, and I and I ask that because earlier in the year you heard guys like Alvin Kamara or Cam Jordan stepping up, and even in the media saying, "We talked to the team, we had this." You have to call it out in practice so it doesn't happen in the game, but it's kept happening in the game. So is that a lack of accountability just ar- overall from the coaches, from the players, or is the mentality starting to kind of shift in the locker room as as well potentially? You know, we look for signs for that, obviously, because, you know, that can be a real thing. Um, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen these mistakes or these games or this season being lost due to a, a lack of energy early in games. In fact, they, they've come out. I would say Pittsburgh was a disappointment in, yeah. in that sense. But then they came back and played one of their best games of the season. Um against the Rams and, and everybody said, you know, we played like we had nothing to lose. You know, that, you know, they, they had so much energy in that game. I think they came out with the right energy against San Francisco. And obviously Alvin Kamara loses the fumble on the, the opening possession and that kills him. And then the second possession, Taysom Hill jumps on a false start and that drive ends in a fourth and one. And um, two, two times they get stopped at the goal line, but the defense sure put up a good fight. It was, it was one of the better defensive performances we've seen all season. And, I mean, of course, Dennis Allen has lost all credit in the bank, and this coaching staff has, has earned no credit. Everybody thinks because Sean Payton's gone, everything's fallen to the wayside. But, I mean, look at what derailed him last week. Two fumbles by Alvin Kamara, who's never lost two fumbles in a season before. Uh, Ryan Ramchek with the false start. Um, you know, the all-pro right tackle. Yeah. I don't think those guys are guys who, who are quitting on the season, and I don't think those fumbles and false starts happen because they don't care or they don't respect their coaches and they're not trying. But it, it is it is maddening. that, And, I mean, it's what I wrote about the other day. I, I called false starts and fumbles the F words that have derailed their season. Maddening that that's what we were talking about in September, and here we are still talking about it in December. Yeah, I mean, and it, I guess it is kind of one of those things where it's, uh, you know, you are what you are at, at this point. I mean, you're going into your bye after this, and I mean this is week thirteen, but it is. I mean it's it's 
It's maddening to, to say the least. Uh, so the Saints, they'll go. They'll play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Monday night football. Now, Dennis Allen brought this up, and I'm kind of hesitant to even bring it up, but they have five games left, and three of them are in the division. Yeah. Looking at it right now, they're game and a half out. Um, mathematically, it's possible. What do they have to do to finally kick it into gear, and can they? Well, I mean, this this is the matchup, right? I yeah. Mean, if you beat Tampa Bay, depending on what happens with the other teams, you're a half game out of first, and and you know you have you beat Tampa Bay, and you have record if you sweep the three division of schedule over the last. I can keep talking about math. Ridiculous as it sounds, undeserved as it may be, <laughs> you win this game. You know, you win this game, you're allowed to talk about winning the division. And I do think the team that we see coming out of the bye week in week 15 will by far be the healthiest team we've seen since they start. So win this game, and, and that stuff's not a joke. Win this game, and, and you can decide, you know what, we're going to try to win the division at 8-9, and, nine and, and and so be it. Uh, but it gives them something to play for, so... We should be rooting for that if that's if we want to see a December that means something. Yeah, I know. Hey, I'm absolutely. I'm I'm here rooting for it. That's for sure. I just uh, I'm sure, like everybody, have uh, have my doubts that that. But you know, that's why they play the games. And Monday night, they'll tee it up and kick it off, and we'll we'll see. And it's a matchup that is a uh, that is favored. <laughs> is, is Mike Evans going to cheap shot anybody this week, or, or are we going to are we past that? Maybe. No, no, he doesn't do it every game. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I would not be surprised. If one side or the other decides to see how far they can push the envelope, because I mean we've now seen two games that you know where where all pro level Pro Bowl level players are getting ejected from the game because of how they handle things. I mean we saw the Saints getting in Tampa Bay's head. We see we see Tom Brady smashing surface tablets on the sideline. <laughs> I mean emotion will play a role in this game without question and. The team that can control those emotions, that's important in this game. Yes, uh, Tom, he, uh, what is he? he couldn't, couldn't remember the password. He couldn't remember the password, so he slammed it on the ground. I hate okay. when that happens. Yeah, me too. It happens all the time, too. Sure, Tom, sure. Mike, we appreciate the time, as always. You'll follow him on Twitter at Mike Triplett of New Orleans. Football. Thanks, as always, Mike, and uh, talk to you next week. All right, thanks. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.